called to order. Tom Bocard, I'm a, a resident of University Glen. Uh, just a comment about uh, it's related to your financial reports. I know that's a topic for today. Wanted to ask um, Schedule One, Schedule Two on the financial statements. Um, I think in particular, turn it about um, Schedule Two in particular. If, you, if they could be expanded in some way or modified to provide a little more detail for University Glen activities, specifically. Um, for example, cash, if, if there's a way you could break out cash that's related to reserves set aside for University Glen and so forth. So just want to ask if that could be considered for going forward. Um, it would help. I, I think it's a great suggestion. It would help, well, it would help residents. I, yeah. You know, I look at this and there's nothing here that helps me at all understand our situation. No, but I think it's a very so, good suggestion. All right, that's it. Thank you. That says yes. So, okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any further public comments? <coughs> All right, we're moving on. Uh, board member comments. Consent agenda. I'll move the agenda. Second. And seconded. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody's opposed. I guess we're there. Okay. Uh, information and action items. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Roland Basson <clears throat> with a frog in his throat. I did too a lot of that going around. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm the engagement partner on the audit of uh, the authorities, financing, and uh, site authority here at this campus. Um, I want to make a brief uh, report on the results of the audit uh, for the year ended June 30th. Of, uh, 2019. First of all, I want to thank uh, all the fiscal uh, staff uh, for the uh, help given to us in the audit and the programmatic staff. Without that cooperation, the audit is very difficult to perform. So thank you very much. Much appreciated. I want to mention in the in the audit report, if, you're, uh, if you have that uh, in front of you, on uh, page one uh, and two. Uh, is the uh, independent auditor's report. What those two pages of text boil down to is that we use generally accepted auditing standards to test the books, records, and financial statements for conformity with generally accepted accounting principles. And based on our tests, we believe that the financial statements are fairly stated in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. It's called an unmodified opinion you would think of it a good opinion it wouldn't it start with the word un but unmodified means good in our language uh, the the next several uh, pages are uh, what's called the management discussion and analysis it's a requirement of uh, generally accepted auditing standards for uh, governmental uh, organizations such as this and, and that and it describes the fluctuations between the years we are not required under our standards to audit that document. Uh, however, we do uh, read it, we're required to read it and determine if there are any anomalies between what the story it tells and the, the basic uh, financial statements that we audit. There are no such uh, anomalies. In, uh, in terms of, of page uh, seven, <coughs> the uh, uh, total assets near the middle of the page uh, are 63 million. Uh, for the year ended uh, June 30th, 2019. Last year, 2018, it was 70 million. Primarily, uh, primary decreases in uh, in, in cash, uh, and uh, are are due uh, to the uh, the energy uh, uh, function within the organization being put in a standby mode during the year, so the revenue is lower. Also, uh, the uh, home sales were lower during uh, the year. 
uh, in terms of, of current liabilities, uh, the, the liabilities changed a bit uh, during the year, uh, more than a bit. They went uh, down for the, uh, for the year, uh, the, uh, consistent with the uh, amortization of the debt and the capitalized lease obligations. Uh, also, the, uh, the payable, uh, the related uh, party payable uh, went down. The related party payable is a, is a payable to other auxiliaries and to campus uh, and, that, and that fluctuates widely based on the uh, campus-wide uh, uh, view of, of uh, cash flow. So that can fluctuate without alarm uh, from, uh, from time to time. So it's decrease is not uh, something of uh, 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 noteworthiness uh, to the auditors over on page eight. Uh, statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in position. You can see uh, at the top quarter of the page, the total operating revenues went uh, down substantially. Energy sales uh, and home sales uh, decreased. Uh, those were all part of decisions that uh, arose from uh, the, uh, the organization. Uh, and then down in, in the non-operating uh, revenue, uh, there, there were decreases, uh, corresponding decreases uh, as, as well, um, and the, uh, it also reflected in there the interest on uh, the uh, debts that uh, the organization uh, has. Uh, keep in mind that this organization was, was formed as a conduit for the financing of, of, of many of the, of the infrastructure of this uh, uh, organization, so it was designed specifically to meet a, a purpose in, in that. And so it, it, there really is no comparable type of norm to which to compare these, these changes, and, and that I should point that out. Uh, over on page nine is the cash flow uh, statement uh, for, the, for the year, about two thirds of the way down the page. Uh, is, uh, is, uh, it shows the uh, cash uh, beginning, uh, beginning and ending cash. Overall, I, sorry, about the middle of the page, cash went down uh, substantially for the, for the year primarily, as I indicated, because of the lower home sales and because uh, the energy uh, facility was put on, on a standby um, mode. Uh, I don't have any other comments about the rest of the, of the financial statements. All of the uh, disclosures that are required have been included in there. There are a large number of, uh, of the schedules that, that follow, and those schedules are dictated by the needs of the chancellor's office because their uh, task is to produce a financial statement for the entire university system and therefore every, you know, each 23 campus and 90 some auxiliaries need to report on a consistent basis and those schedules in the back of the report uh, assist in, in that uniformity. Uh, those are the, the uh, comments I have on the, uh, the site authority. Any questions or concerns at this point? And then the other the audit was done, the financing of the Yes, sorry, I didn't see it. That's okay. Um, talking about Tana Island Tower, um, do you see that um, it's an annual, we have done an annual audit, right, for yes. the year. Uh, do you see that there's a, a pattern or something? I know we have standby in some cases, but we're not meeting our over, not overall um, estimate of what our, our expenditures, our, our revenue would be. Right, and, and the reason that it's difficult to provide normative information is that this organization is not a normative organization in that. The events that we that occurred appear to be consistent with decisions that were made by the board of the directors, but it, in terms of how that's gonna be in the future, I'd have to ask management to, to answer that question. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we can kind of get a good feel if our estimates are accurate. Right. Unfortunately, the auditor rides the horse backwards. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Easier to tell you what happened in the past than what is going to happen. So that's something we can discuss later, right? Yeah, we, we can provide a with our CR colleagues uh, where we are relative to um, actuals, budget to actuals for uh, the operations of CI Power. Um, I, I guess I would say, and I'll turn to um, our facilities folks, uh, that for the most part, I believe that we are getting estimates. It's just that there's a huge differential between how we were 
Yeah, operating prior to going with this, you know, we'll call you when we need you kind of thing, and um, and prior, where we were, you know, uh, making you know, uh, uh, net revenues of between three and five million dollars. Uh, so it's a huge gap, but relative to the current contract, we can on a, every time we need provide an update and an es estimate to projected actuals. Uh, can I ask you just one follow up, which is not specific to the audit, but seeing all these power outages everyone's having? No. Are you immune from those because you have the power plant? Uh, we did not experience any outages. Uh, one of the reasons that we didn't experience outages is because we have, we're one of the few campuses that has um, redundancy in our feed. So, and that's been a good thing for us. And actually, it's like we've got three levels of redundancy. So uh, we weren't affected um, this last time around um, by the uh, by the outage, uh, the outages that occurred. So that's something that we really didn't contemplate at the time when we were making decisions about the power plant. Is that all of a sudden we had these PSPSs yes. and the threats of shutdown? But it seems like you have that extra redundancy because yes. you have the power plant. Yeah, so there are um, there are different feeds that are coming in. Yep. Tom could probably describe it um, more, you know, technically. But we have different feeds coming in from different locations that give us that ability. And then we've got um, our own um, uh, generators. Gen generators. And is that an accurate statement that you have um, the use of the Channel Islands power plant if you need it during power outages? <coughs> No, that part's not accurate. So okay. we have two different lines from Edison. Um, the primary one is the same one that the top power plant is on, um, but if that were to not be available, you know, for whatever reason, issues, fire, whatever in the region, our backup is a different line that's not normally uh, used, but it's there and available when we need it. If that one were to also not be available because of Edison, then we have standby generators to power the plant. So we basically have triple redundancy. So but you're saying the Channel Islands Power Plant, the natural gas power plant, does not provide you any That's um, ability to use it during the power shut off by Edison. Yeah. Well, since oh. this current contract went into effect, we don't get any power from the power plant anymore. Right? Just resource adequacy, coal. <coughs> and, and if you wanted to, could you? I just no, find that it's a, you know, we're all in this really difficult situation. Our load power is about two megawatts off. max. That's a 28 megawatt plant, so, and they can't run it just two megawatts. They couldn't run and then only supply us. We have to have a battery storage or whatever. But should we talk about the PI plant on item 12? Okay, we can. Yeah. Okay. Because I had some other questions, but I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, okay. Well, you. the final piece, is not much to say. Just want to recognize that, that we did, uh, in, in accordance with the Chancellor's uh, requirements, audit the financing authority. Uh, it's largely vestigial. It has only assets of about sixteen thousand dollars, and no significant um, uh, transactions uh, during the year. Uh, I just wanted to say something about it because it's one of the audit reports that we uh, are involved in. So you had questions. You Mine said. is on item twelve. Okay, great. Any other questions for Rowan? Um, one other one regarding the CAM reserves. Is that um, over the years? Is, is this like the lowest we've seen? Uh, we, we don't uh, trend uh, that uh, because the numbers are so much larger in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the audit. Uh, we focus primarily on, on the revenues and expenses of the two uh, main uh, revenue and expense uh, generators. In the past, we have audited the CAM and, and that, and there were some changes that were made. That was two or three years ago uh, and, and so forth, uh, but uh, there isn't a, a separate um, audit done of that, that uh, particular area. It's subject to auditing in some areas with respect to internal control uh, in, in that, but there is no separate audit. Um, it, it, you know, I mentioned that uh, uh, asking for a report is very easy to include within the audit a separate report on, on, the, on the CAM and on the operations at the University of Glenn and so forth. So it's just a no-brainer. I think that's maybe why um, you admit indication, you know, nodded your head, yes, we could do that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other? Okay. One point, one point I would like to make, when we approve the meeting in the consent agenda, we are talking about the document that was sitting in front of you. Yes, that February changed to the 24th. 
ties to everybody else, is we changed the February meeting from the 17th, because that was President's Day, to the 24th in February. But it, it's been approved in the consent agenda, so it's this one, the 24th, and not the 17th. I'll motion to approve uh, the audit. Great. We'll have a second. Thank you, Robert. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Audit's approved. Roll it. Thank you. My okay, pleasure. The open bank account for reserves. Stephanie? Sure. So, um, as you recall, there has been a request by the budget advisory group of University Glen. Um, in our collaboration of working through the budget, one of the item requests was to open a separate bank account for reserves. I'm happy to report that we are now looking forward to get you approved um, the opening of the bank accounts for those two down reserves. be extending the contract past their 2020 date. So um, I didn't know if that had any to deal with anything for us in regards to our contract with SEP. Um, and wanted to make sure that that's on our radar for budgeting. Yes, like mm -hmm. Supervisor Parks was talking about and what our budget is and the flexibility. It's a, it's a great observation, and I think it's one that we want to explore in our next five-year capital plan for the campus. We are, we do have a battery storage uh, project online, and so I think that uh, offloading the, uh, uh, to this battery storage would be one way to help with the uh, this these cutoffs that are occurring that will, for the foreseeable future, so um, taking potentially any excess off of, if the, if the plant were to run, take any excess off, we, we uh, consume two to three megawatts, right? You know, storing, storing the uh, excess. Is it, it, it appears to be, could be an option. It's something that you know, we'll explore because we do have that battery storage project uh, right. on our capital projects list. And that's connected with the solar project. Uh, or is that independent? Yeah. And you were talking specifically <coughs> going to metro gas power plant to battery storage. So um, I think that's part of what we would need to, you know, so evaluate. I haven't heard that one yet. Yeah. 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 I thought we know about solar to battery, but there's also the potential for doing natural gas to battery. So I, I think that's one of the things that we want to explore. Mm -hmm. Those are options that we want to explore. 
always feel um, you guys are uh, direct access is how you get yes. on the Edison. It's not through um, Clean Power Alliance. And <laughs> but there are funds out there, <laughs> you know, to, to do these kind of projects through the Clean Power Alliance, among others. Can't think of the name of the university who created their own they alliance? Or did they are not going to I didn't hear the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So we will, we will come back to you at the beginning of our uh, next calendar year okay. uh, with an update on uh, where the CSU is. Uh, there's there's the CCAs. CCAs. Yeah. Yeah. There's been more progress on it, but we, we weren't ready to say Well, we would love to have you in the Clean Power Alliance if you ever want to. I'm uh, representing our county on it and on the executive board, and it's pretty nice to see large organizations join in and basically another contract similar to what we have right now. So it's a call as needed. Um, we're providing basically insurance in the event that we need the power, they know that we're here and we're available. So they're paying us to be available. Um, we're not actually we're not actually selling them energy the way we were on their previous third year contract. That's why there's a big difference. Um, it is very predictable though because we know month by month as long as we're here and we're available, we know how much we're going to make. Um, and then if we actually do get called to generate, we do make it a little bit extra, but it's not a lot. Is that a little bit extra if we are called upon enough to cover our <coughs> marginal costs to fire the thing up? Yes, yeah, so it covers the marginal costs. Yeah. And then the audit said that uh, 2018, if I'm reading this right on page five, that our income was $9.6 million for 2018 for energy sales, and then this year our ending June 2019 at 3.2. So that's a substantial decrease of more than 65%. So the question is, step down. 
Seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we have an action item uh, regarding the appointment of a secretary, Rosa. That's our secretary, and we need, need, to, need to make the appointment official. Congratulations. Or <laughs> <laughs> you're even appointed. <laughs> Can I get a motion to make it official? <laughs> I would love to make her official. Okay. Motion to approve. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <laughs> Why, I sure hope not. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you. Information. Campus update. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's hard to believe that we are rapidly approaching the end of the semester. We're right at the tail end, and I can tell by the look in the students' eyes um, when I see them on campus. Um, so we've ha had a lot of things going on, but I thought actually I'd start by giving you an update on a news release that we just put out. Um, and it's related to um, you know all of the emergency preparedness that we have been engaging in on campus. and. Um, we've gotten very good at responding to emergencies because we've had a whole host of them across our entire county, but um, we just were recognized, we were given the designation of Storm Ready from the National Weather Service. Um, it is a competitive application. There are only two other CSD campuses who've actually received this designation, and it is a result of um, uh, Isabel's team, and in particular, Maggie Tugas, our emergency <coughs> uh, manager, for having the plans in place, the communication systems in place, um, in order for us to respond to weather events. So I think it's really timely and um, one more example of the really great work um, that happens on campus all, all the time uh, behind the scenes to make sure that we're ready for whatever comes our way. So pretty excited about that. 
Um, we've got some uh, capital updates as well. So um, we're remodeling the Anzanita Hall on the other side of campus, um, and it will become the new home for the MBS School of Business, which is currently located in the not that impressive architecturally designed building right next to it, the big white box. Um, they're very excited, the faculty are very excited about having um, a place, um, as is uh, the family, Martin and Smith's family. So that's really exciting. Um, Grand Salon, so um, thank you to both supervisors uh, for attending last Friday. Yeah, Friday. Friday. It's, it's all at the, at the end of the semester. It all blends together. Um, last Friday, we had our inaugural Channel Your Network event, and it was really um, to highlight all of the good work that's happening in the county, um, between county and the university, and our business uh, and industry um, and uh, community leaders. And it was really well attended, and it was a wonderful um, event. And it was in our newly remodeled uh, Grand Salon. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to go and. Take a look, it looks decidedly less like a high school gym at this point. Um, and it is, uh, it's a really nice space that I think will have a lot more interest uh, in engaging. But, but thanks for being there, it was, a, it was a wonderful event and a good start to the conversation about uh, building intellectual capacity around uh, future vitality of our community. So uh, it was, went really well. Um, we're also, uh, any day now, we'll begin um, the remodel in uh, Central Mall for in time for our um, commencement because it just keeps growing. Um, graduate more and more students every year, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we will also have a sculpture garden, outdoor sculpture garden um, in Central Mall. It's really exciting, fully um, uh, funded by our foundation board, so they raised a significant amount of money to make this happen. It'll be really lovely, so excited about that. Um, and then on the academic side, I thought I would let you all know that we just received approval uh, to offer our very first Master's of Science in Nursing. Yay. It's really yeah. needed. We're yeah. so excited about it. So we anticipate that we'll launch um, next fall. Yeah. Um, it will be um, also um, uh, Master's of Science in Nurse um, Educator. And so one of the biggest limiting factors for all of the colleges and universities uh, in our region um, to expanding their nursing program is that we can't find qualified nursing faculty. So we are going to start growing our own nursing faculty right here that will help both with community colleges and the other uh, universities um, and colleges in the region. So we're very 